Hello and welcome to the Unplug Live coaching call. I am so excited for this. I have to say, I'm actually standing up, but I'm standing up for a reason because I've been binging all of Brian's uh, YouTube spots and interviews and he always stands up. I'm going to ask him about that. Uh-huh. Now, I've told you guys before, I've been on the Oprah Winfrey show a couple of times and you know, the thing about Oprah is she never meets her guests before she has them on. So today, this is my first time where I actually never met this guy, yet I know him so well. And the reason why is because I went out for lunch with someone and I asked her who inspired her. And she said, Brian Johnson. So then I started watching some things of Brian Johnson. I was so enamored that I ended up doing his live coaching course. And I just, I'm a fan. I'm fanning. It's I have to just put it out there. Why am I such a fan? Because he is the master of simplifying the most brilliant wisdom on the planet. He's read more books than anybody I've ever met, and I've never met him. Um, and the book that I had sent to all of my teachers, so hopefully there's a lot of teachers on here from Unplug. And I gave to my mom and I gave to my in-laws and I gave to my husband and my kids and my friends is this book. It's called Arate. And when I say it is the best book that I've ever read, I have read a lot of books. But what I love so much about this is this is 500 of the best self-discovery books encapsulated into 451 short two-page stories. Brilliant beyond brilliant. I also would like to call this the playbook for living your best life. So if you would like to live a life of arete, that's how you pronounce it, excellence, you're going to want to get this book. I never recommend anything that I don't believe in. I believe in this. So there, I was thinking about taping my mouth shut so that Brian could talk the entire time. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce Brian Johnson. Hello, Brian. Suze, this is the first time we've met, and I just feel so blessed. That was the most gracious, wonderful introduction ever. Thank you. Uh, I'm I'm really, really grateful, and I'm thrilled to connect, and I appreciate you deeply. Thank you. Uh, this is the first time I'm standing up during an interview, because I've seen yours. And, you know, my first question is, you do these podcasts, you do these interviews, you're standing, the other guy's sitting. Why? It's really funny. I, I've never actually been asked that question, really thought about it. It's just become my style of teaching. And it's funny because I, I was giving a talk recently and I started sitting down during part of it. And I'm like, wait, I can't teach sitting down. There's a, It's become this thing for me where uh, I just feel most comfortable just kind of standing and getting ready to share in that context. And now it's just become, I've done it so many times that doing anything else would be weird, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to be sharing wisdom with everyone on basically the how to live your life, the best life you could ever imagine. Step one would be buying this book. I'm just going to say that because this encapsulates all of your brilliant wisdom that you share. Um, Boom. And step two would be to just get a piece of paper and get a pen, because if you see this book, you can see that I can open up any page. And I've underlined and circled it 10 times. Okay. So Brian didn't come from, you know, usually the people who teach this are the people who need to learn this. So when I see Brian, I think this is my hero. This, if I had to have a face on the back of my wall, it would be your face, Brian. Seriously, you're going to continue. You're up there with Eleanor Roosevelt for me. Um, And I'm not even kidding. I'm serious about that. So... You started because, you know, you were a nervous child. You had um, a father who was an alcoholic. You would go to school and you would be sweating because of your your nerves. And now here you are speaking in front of thousands of people. And when I look at your protocol on the Heroic app, which, by the way, is genius, Hmm. I can't even believe that you could possibly swipe all those virtues in one day. Hmm. So without further ado, I'm just going to kind of let you talk. And here are some things that I know people would love to hear about is one, how did you start this? Two, I know what your mission is, but they don't know what your mission is. If you could share that. 
talk about the people that are behind you, standing behind you, and then kind of just the best advice that you can give from this book. And I'm going My to goodness. mute myself. <laughs> Not a lot though, right? Uh, <laughs> perfect. The origin story, mission, heroes, and uh, hopefully some wisdom. Yeah, you you, you kind of mentioned part of my origin story, you know, and as I released the book, did more and more of these kind of podcast interviews. And I found myself, I, I talk about it always anyway, because I think it's really important. I think people can look at people like me and you and the positions we're blessed to be in and think that we've just got it all figured out. And we've always had it figured out. And neither one of those are true for me today. I'm still continuing to figure it out. And I, uh, the suffering that I experienced in my family of origin and just as a young boy and then as a young man, was the kind of um, <clears throat> what led me to strive to understand how to integrate ancient wisdom and modern science. But yeah, youngest of five kids, lower middle class, Catholic family. My father was a good man, but struggled with alcohol. His dad struggled with alcohol and ended his own life. And so I like to playfully joke now that it seems that I lost both the genetic and the environmental lottery on that one. And I experienced my own challenges. First generation college student, Knew I didn't want to do what I did after graduating from UCLA, went to law school, and knew I didn't want to do that, dropped out, and I was spinning and, you know, contemplated ending my own life. I know what it feels like to feel that. And then I know what it feels like over the last, you know, 25 plus years now to scaffold certain practices into my life that you mentioned, uh, you know, as part of our app is helping people get clarity on who they are at their best. Um, and then consistently showing up as that best version of themselves by doing the things we do when we're at our best. Then you forge what I call anti-fragile confidence, which is my newest tattoo, which is related to the mission. So I'll go from origin story to mission. So I've spent half of the last 25 years as a founder CEO. I built and sold two social platforms before Facebook. And when I wasn't doing that, I was reading, writing, thinking, and teaching studying Socrates in Athens, Jesus in Jerusalem, Aurelius in the Danube of Hungary, Rumi in Turkey, that kind of thing. Um, and then I, I created a company called Heroic Public Benefit Corporation um, in 2020. Election night, politics aside, woke up and said, okay, somebody needs to do something related to um, a number of different things. But our mission is to help create a world in which 51% of humanity is flourishing by the year 2051. And I have that tattooed on my forearm. Um, it's inspired by Martin Seligman, the founder of the positive psychology movement. And my joke is most people, writing your goals down is a really good idea. You know, you write your goals down, you increase the odds of success by 43%. A lot of people write their goals and put it on a post-it note on their bathroom mirror. I put my ultimate mission and goal on my forearm. But around heroic, I have anti-fragile confidence which is kind of the thing that, that I'm talking more and more about. We do bus to do work with the military, special forces operators, SEALs and, and other individuals like that, um, professional sports teams. That's what they want me to talk about is anti-fragile confidence, um, such that when life hits you and you're challenged, you can use that as fuel to get stronger. Um, and that brings us to the protocol. It's all about knowing who you are at your best and doing those things when you feel your worst, which is from now we're going to go to the heroes, unintended, but now we'll go to the, my, my heroes. The, I only have two living heroes on my wall, Phil Stutz, who's my coach, and John Mackey, the founder of Whole Foods, who's a friend and mentor. But Phil Stutz, who's featured in the Netflix documentary Stutz, um, with another one of his clients, Jonah Hill, is my deepest um, kind of... Uh, inspiration and uh, he's had the deepest impact on me just personally we've worked together one-on-one -on -one, almost 451 one-on-one -on -one sessions um, and he talks about emotional stamina which i've extended into anti-fragile confidence we can talk about but that idea of when you feel worst you're most committed to your practice and to your protocol is the essence of everything that we do and now i have said an incredible amount so i'm glad that you do not have tape on your mouth which is a whole nother chat, by the way, sleeping with tape on our mouths. My readiness is a 41 right now, by the way, aura readiness 41. Last night was the first night in, I don't know how long that I couldn't sleep with tape on my mouth because I was congested. So my apologies for the, uh, the <laughs> nasally voice, but I've officially said more than enough. Excited to hear your thoughts. I love listening to you. I've loved listening to you for such a long time. 
And I just have to tell everyone when we talk about protocol, I'm so curious. Actually, I was so curious about your protocol. And then I was talking to Jenna and she showed me that inside your app, I could actually see your protocol. Hmm. I don't know how you have time to do all the things that you do in one day. And I would love to kind of learn a little bit about how your philosophy moment to moment to moment and making the best decisions every time. Um, you know, when you have the chocolate chip cookies on the right and you have the apple on the left, you go always to the apple. I always go to the chocolate chip, <laughs> chocolate chip cookies and then I regret. I live in that regret that happens in the, in the gap in between and, and you talk about that. So I am, I'm interested about that. There were certain things that I knew. You know, the heroic app, the idea is to help people move from theory to practice, to mastery together today. So we all know what we could be doing and the challenge is doing that more consistently, never perfectly, but more and more consistently. Um, so part of the app, and we built this with the same company that built Slack, Tinder, Uber Eats, and some other apps. Um, but the short story is, um, if I was gonna do a practical exercise with you that I do basically in every talk that I give, I wanna help you think back to a time in your life when you were at your best. So whether it was a day or a week or a month, I wanna know who you were at your best, right? And I wanna write down, we bust out a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle, put do on the left, don't on the upper right, and then write down the things that you were doing at your best and that you weren't doing when you were at your best. And then think about and circle the one thing you know you could be doing, that if you started doing, it would most change your life. And the one thing you need to start doing, which is, uh, stop doing rather, which is the fastest way to change your life. Can we um, pause for a second? Because I see yeah. people writing this down as you're talking. So um, just a quick recap, you put the do on the one side and the don't on the other. You list all the things you do when you're your best self, all the things you don't do when you're, you know, what you shouldn't do, right? And then you circle the best? Yeah, and this isn't abstract. I actually, I like to help people think about, you've already done this. So I'm okay. not saying the things you think you should do or the things you think you shouldn't do. What I want to do is connect you at your best in the past because you've already done it. Mm -hmm. And if you've done it in the past, then my, my question and challenge to you is why did you stop doing it, right? And we need to quit giving away the gains that we achieved in the past. And I've been blessed to, to serve people that didn't want to get out of bed for another day, who have built scaffolding and hope and, and, and practices in their life that help them avoid such catastrophic downs. And people who are at the other end of the spectrum um, go next, next, next level, because there's always opportunities to, to close the gap. But it's important to emphasize that this isn't an abstraction. This is a, no, no, you've already done it. And if you've done it before, we can reinstall that habit or delete the habit that we need to get rid of. And then the app is simply walking you through that in what I call the big three. So the follow on exercise is, okay, do, don't in general. Then I want to know our big three is energy, work, and love. And I talk about Stephen Covey, roles and goals, Tony Robbins, categories of improvement, and then Sigmund Freud, with whom I don't agree on most things, he said a good life comes down to two things, your work and your love. If you can get your work and your love pretty good, you're going to have a pretty good life. I say yes and. If your energy isn't high because of poor lifestyle choices, look at you. Um, you're going to have a hard time showing up powerfully in either your work or your love. So that's our big three, energy, work, and love. And the follow-on exercise is three more pieces of paper. Do, don't, energy, work, and love. And then again, I want to think about you at your best and your energy. You're super energized. Maybe you're doing 5Ks or you were doing yoga a certain amount or meditating a certain amount. And you felt really alive energetically. Then work. Maybe you were really productive for a particular phase in your life. Let's go back and dust off what you were doing. And then love. When you felt most connected to your intimate, you know, family, your friends, et cetera, what were you doing and what were you not doing? And then we systematically architect your quote protocol, the things you do when you're at your best. And it's like a simple checklist. And the way I frame that up is, um, 
you know the research that Atul Gawande did on um, surgeons and checklists? Are you familiar with the checklist manifesto? I probably should be since I'm oh, a, I don't mean um, to put you on the I'm spot. an optimized life coach, but I space it. So share. You sweetheart. Oh my goodness, you're awesome. So Atul Gawande is a world-class surgeon who wrote a great book called The Checklist Manifesto. And in it, he talks about the fact that like you would never get on a plane. Whenever I give a keynote and I flew from Austin to wherever I am, I literally say I would never have gotten on that plane unless I was certain the pilot and the co-pilot and the team had a checklist that they went through. You'd never do that. And it, you couldn't because it's so demanded. Well, you shouldn't get a surgery with a surgical team that doesn't have a simple checklist. Basic stuff like, hi, my name is. We're going to operate on this side of the body, perform this surgery. Very basic things. Teams that don't have a checklist, surgical teams, kill 46% more people than surgical teams that do have a checklist. So then my proposition is, if you want to have great days, you're less likely to kill the day if you have a checklist of simple things driven from that do and don't list that we create. Um, and that's all we've done with the app. Now I'm crazy. So I have, I just want to, I just want to clap. Um, I see actually my mom is on this call. She no always way. tells Where's me to mom? do a check. My mom, wave mom. Um, she always, there she is. Oh she goodness. always tells me to do, I bought her this book, by the way. She always tells me to do a checklist and that's something that I'm just starting to do in my 57th year. So, uh, yes. Perfect timing. Oh my goodness. Hi mom right back at you. Oh, this is so great. So that, that's what the app is. Now, again, I'm crazy. So I've got, I've got the different things I do, but look, at the share, end of the day, I want you share what you do. Like I want, I just am so yeah. curious what your morning protocol is. And there was one thing you said that you did, you did that I tried that I copied and I felt great. And you said, well, why did I stop? Or you were saying this question to everybody. And I stopped probably because I got bored, tired, or I don't even know why. But you yep. put a timer on your phone so that the alarm goes off. Is it every 90 seconds or is it, what is, is it? Is this for the burpees kind of thing? Yeah, this is your burpee situation. Yeah, that's every like 15 to 20 minutes. I do it every yeah. thousand seconds. Every thousand, how many burpees are you doing every thousand seconds? Just 11, I just do sets of 11, 10, yeah. I felt You're great right. when I was copying your protocol. So I would love to know a little bit more about your protocol. Oh, uh, that's so, again, I appreciate your, your graciousness and generosity and kindness. Um, so for me, eating, moving, and sleeping are everyone's core fundamentals, but I, I really, really pay attention to them. So I have a certain nutritional protocol that I'm experimenting with all the time and following. And then I move a certain way that's fun for me. Won't be fun for anybody else, but I do certain things that I love and I make a game out of it. Um, and then the third thing is sleep, which is actually my number one, is making sure I get enough sleep. So I'm in bed for nine to 10 hours a night to make sure that I get eight to nine hours of sleep per night. Now, of course, there are you know situations in which I, I flex on that if I'm traveling or I've got different things going on. But those are my top three. If I do those things, it's really hard to have a really bad day. And if I do those things, especially after I did have a not great day, I know that I, I'm not going to spin out. Because me, the old me, when I would have a rough day, I would tend to do the things that I know I shouldn't be doing. And then the next day, I would feel not so good psychologically and physiologically because I did those things, whether it's staying up late or eating a certain way. And then another day would go and another day would go and I would forget what I did before I kind of went off the rails, as I like to say. So our challenge to our, our community is figure out the three top things you do, energy, work, and love when you're at your best, and then try to have a, a series of bad days. You're going to have ups and downs because you're human, but try to have really bad days. When you do those simple, basic things and you exert your agency, et cetera. Anyway, for me, I meditate every morning, used to be 60 minutes in the morning and 60 minutes at night. That's always evolving as I get. Uh, Someone asked evolving. what a burpee is. There we go. Burpees <laughs> are named after a guy named Royal H. Burpee. They're basically a squat and you jump back into a plank position. You do a push up and then you spring forward and you jump up. So it's a beautiful movement that you can do in different kind of um, styles. 
Are you going to do one for us? I'll right do now? one for you, even though Look I you. They get it. Look okay, everybody's seeing my. Sorry for in. my messy desk, mom. Hold on. Are you okay. kidding me? Look at this office space. I want to move in with you. We're going to get a burpee. This is All so right. fantastic. Okay, so you, I jump. No, I squat, jump, go down. Uh, 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 right? Look at that. Oh, that is so good. That's exactly it. And it's a great, you are awesome. It's a great full body <laughs> dynamic movement um that i love and again most people do not love burpees which frankly is another one of the reasons i do love it i want to do things that frankly i i didn't used to like to do and then most people don't like to do just out of principle i want to train myself to enjoy doing those things um and they happen to be some of the most like energizing um movements you can do um so that was that was so good fantastic target swipe for you for many reasons um but then I, I just have a series of things that I do. None of which, by the what, way- What about this? Do you know what I just yeah. did? Yeah, exactly. I know what you're doing. You found <laughs> so it. So he, <laughs> with his son, Emerson, sometimes he, you know, I'm sure Emerson might find it cringy now because I think he's 11, right? But sometimes he'll say, I have something in my pocket for you and he'll pull it out and I'll give him the love symbol. And uh, I do it. I do it with my son, Cooper now. And he, he cracks up every time I do that. So Isn't it fun? That's so good. Um, yeah, I love you game. Yeah, but anyway, we can go through the different lists, but but each of us have different things um, that we do. Those are some of the things that I do, but announce this breadcrumbs, you know, um, where it's, this is just what a pretty good day looks like. Now, I don't hit them all every single day, but like I said, it's really hard to have a really bad day when you've created this structural framework um, that gives you the best shot at connecting to your best self, um, you know, and then that's the point of meditation from my mind is how do we connect to that best kind of spirit, soul, daimon, the ancient Greeks and, and Roman Stoics would call it that guiding spirit. Um, and I'm just trying to do all the things I can to connect to that throughout my day. And these are some of the things that I've found to be effective. Um, first of all, Mar Marcy Cole, I want to shout her out real quick. She's the one who turned me on to you. I was out for lunch with her and I asked her who inspired her and she said you and pretty much that was I think a year ago and I, I stopped there I stopped having lunch with people and then I just was all on your game for a year so Marcy <laughs> I'm happy that you're here shout out to you um okay I want to interrupt for a quick second because I am very precious with my time here I love your meditation. I know you meditation is definitely a non-negotiable in your protocol. Yours is usually 15 minutes. I know that we kind of spoke um, about doing a five minute meditation. And I would love if you could guide us through a five minute meditation with your heroes. Um, so people can kind of experience the hero meditation. Let's do it. I appreciate the invitation. And Marcy, bless you. I appreciate you connecting Suze and uh and us today um great to see you yes yeah, so my my meditation that i practice um consists of of breath work and then virtues and then the heroes and then kind of silence and some envision uh, vision um you know I, I guide our our community meditation at you know different kind of times i'm not really a guided meditation teacher per se my my wife produces meditations for us every single day but what i like to do um is just shake out any tension that might be present and connect to our breath. And we will enjoy, hopefully, connecting to our best selves and to our heroes in the process. The breath work that I do is inspired by Patrick McYoun. And he teaches us to breathe through our nose, down into our diaphragm, Back out through our nose, exhaling slightly longer than our inhale. As we find our center, integrating being energized with being tranquil. Training ourselves to be able to flip the switch, as we like to say, inviting the best, most heroic version of ourselves to join us. We do it with our breath, 
We do it with our physical posture. John Cabot Zinn's wisdom on proper posture was summarized in a single word that I love. He says, sit with dignity. You're poised, but not ramrod straight. I like to pull a thread through my head, lengthening my spine. Connecting to my breath. And Thich Nhat Hanh's encouragement of bringing a smile as the most important part of our practice. As we enjoy the silence and the stillness, Let's invite a couple of our favorite heroes to join us. Consider for a moment who two of your favorite heroes might be. Who comes to mind for you? Could be living or deceased. Who are two human beings that inspire you deeply? I have a wall of heroes behind me, and each morning I invite them to join me. They come alive almost like the old professors in Dumbledore's office at Hogwarts. The old headmasters would come alive within the frame. Let's imagine connecting with your favorite hero. Bring one hero to mind now. Invite their presence into your consciousness. See them come to life in your mind. Feel their presence. I imagine their joy in seeing you. Smile at the blessed opportunity to spend time with one of your heroes. Feel your admiration and love for them and feel their admiration and love for you. Think of the qualities they embody that you most admire. What was it about them or is it about them that most inspires you? I've done this so many times, I can quickly bring them up into my mind, feel their presence. I like to give them a hug. And then I like to ask them for one piece of wisdom they can share with me today. What does your hero have to say? What guidance do they offer? Thank them for that wisdom, knowing we could spend a full day with them. Let's invite your second hero to join us. Imagine that second hero of yours joining you in your consciousness, coming alive again. Feel their energy. Feel their presence. Feel what Gandhi would call their soul force. What the ancient Chinese philosophers would call their moral charisma. This is what all of our heroes have in common. There's a palpable, ineffable power in individuals who have fully embraced their idiosyncratic, iconoclastic, heroic destinies. Feel that soul force within your second hero. Again, imagine the qualities within them that you most admire.
know that, of course, those are qualities latent and expressed within you that we have an opportunity to cultivate. And ask them the same question. What wisdom do they want to share with you? Soak that in. Thank them. Then let's invite our third hero to join us. This third hero is the most important one, the most powerful one. It is you at your best, most heroic expression of yourself. In my experience, you at your best, most heroic self is in many ways an integration of those qualities you see in your two favorite heroes. Feel that best, most heroic you, the guiding spirit within you, the joy, the radiance, and ask that best version of you what wisdom they would like to, you to have in mind today. And if you feel so inspired, give each of those three heroes a big hug. Come back to your breath, feeling their presence within. Recommitting to making them proud, making yourself proud today. And that is a quick look at how I spend a few minutes of my morning meditation. And I appreciate the invitation to share that, Suze. Wow. You could almost be a certified unplugged meditation teacher. <laughs> Let us know if you're interested in that. Um, no, you are, were amazing. And that was so beautiful. We have a lot of certified unplugged meditation teachers and teachers on here. Um, and when I think of you, I think of the teacher's teacher. You know how there's the teacher and then there's the teacher's teacher? You'd be in the teacher's teacher guide. Oh, bless you. I'm looking at the teacher's teacher's teacher. Let's go. <laughs> Are you the teacher's 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 teacher? Okay, great. So what I love about you too is that you have a certain way of dealing with technology. Now, most of us are completely addicted, especially people who work, because we kind of feel like we need to, and have kids, need to be on 24-7. You, I think, have um, boundaries with technology, and I would love if you could share some of those boundaries with everyone. Yeah, and again, each of us does in our more enlightened moments, you know, and, and one of my favorite quotes on that subject is to continue to emphasize as I bask in, in your abundant praise is Dan Millman says there are no enlightened human beings, just more or less enlightened moments, you know, and, and Abraham Maslow, there are no perfect human beings, you know, etc. So in my more enlightened moments, yes, I have a great relationship with technology, I use it mindfully, etc. Um, but I, you know, I do things like, um, I have two phones. So I have a phone that I use for work. Um, and I do a lot of texting uh, with my team, my core team and different friends. And then I have a bat phone is what I call it, that only my wife has. Um, that I'll use that again in my more enlightened moments, which I need to do more of when I'm with my kids. So if I go out on the weekend with my kids, I don't want my work phone. I don't even want to be tempted with it. I've just got this little phone. So that's one way that's that's helped me in an idiosyncratic way to, to kind of be engaged when I'm engaged in work and not when I'm not and have a clear separation. But then, you know, the, the number one thing that I practice and teach is not having your phone around when you're in connection mode with people. So whether it's my wife or my kids, like the research is unequivocal. The fastest way to erode connection is to have a phone in sight when you are connecting. And it doesn't even need to be your phone or it doesn't even need to be the other person's phone. Any phone out when you're having a connection will diminish the quality of the depth of that connection. So simply having your phone out of sight, out of touch, ideally, 
um, such that you're fully present is something, it's one of my targets. So in love, one of my targets is phone-free time with the family. Tal Ben Shahar, one of my favorite teachers who taught the largest class in history, his kids got him a beautiful box in which he could put his phone. That was his birthday gift last year, you know? So that's a practice that I love to engage in. Another one is the digital sunset of turning off electronics and screens um, at least an hour before we go to bed. And that's one of my energy targets. Um, that's one of the most important ones. And the fact is almost all of us aren't getting enough sleep. And we need seven to eight hours of sleep. The odds of you, and not in bed, if you're in bed for seven hours, you didn't get seven hours of sleep and you're not getting enough sleep. So you need to be in bed for eight hours to have a good shot at getting seven hours of sleep, longer chat. And the number one way to, to get in the, that gets in the way of that is screen time at night. So blue light that he is emitted from phones, as most of us know at this point, is brand new. I mean, that's decades old. It wasn't until very recently that the only source of that blue light was the sun. And that's important because that sun created the circadian rhythms on which nearly every biological system in our body is dependent. And when you disrupt that with screens late at night, you disrupt everything. Chronic disease, mental health challenges, all those things are driven by, in large part, disruption of our circadian rhythms. And that's a very simple practice to turn off your electronics an hour before you go to sleep. Um, those are some of my, my kind of... Um, practices I engage in and encourage our coaches to consider engaging in and then coach their clients on um, in terms of technology. Um, we can share more, but I'll share one more. The other thing I do is I, I meditate and then I do the most important thing creatively, work-wise, before I allow inputs in. I, I turn my phone off and my computer off before I go to bed and I don't turn it back on until I have connected to my best self. I've done that meditation I've done a little bit of movement and I've done whatever creative thing I decided I was going to do that day. And it can be five, 15, 30 minutes. Sometimes it's more, but that discipline is really important for me where I take agency. I take control. I'm not constantly reacting to life's inputs. And then I find that I can connect to my best self, do my best work and be more energized, productive and connected. Um, that's now a very long answer to a short question, but that, that's some of the ways I approach it. I love that. And you also do something with your lighting in your house. Are you still doing the red light? Jeez, we are so weird. So you think I'm in, I'm all in. My wife is even more all in. My joke is I just do what my wife tells me to do. You know, this, this is, she's like, you know, I've read a lot of books, like, uh, but I'm kind of um, transactional and archaeological. I go in, I find something, I pull it out. Um, she's, she's read at least as much as me, you know, and, and she tells me all the, uh the things to do and then i just do them you know but yeah we're we're um we live in the country outside of austin um we've got our own rhythms and and you know the joke is if you came up to our house after the sun sets it just looked weird we got red lights on you know we never have bright lights on um pretty much ever uh and especially at night so everything we want to slow down at night to the extent we can and again we each have our own idiosyncratic rhythms but uh yeah, we try to get aligned with the, um, the the natural rhythms of the sun. And part of that is the light that we allow um, in. But our kids at three, four, five, they're now seven and 11, could tell you that bright light, why, why don't you want bright light on at night? They'd tell you because it disrupts your melatonin. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make it more difficult to fall asleep. So it's just been a fun thing to culturally uh, normalize our weirdness within our family. I love it. Okay. One of the questions that we had was this is okay. So for those of you who hopped on late, we're talking about this book about Arate, which is about living with excellence. And this is the playbook. So buy it, read it. And don't worry that it's almost a thousand pages because each section is two pages. So honestly, you can open it up to any page like, okay, rebound days, what to do after a sub suboptimal day that's actually a great page for me that's it's almost like a horoscope i could yeah. open up any of these and it's applicable that's, Name really it that's one of my favorite ones by the way though that's Th a that's, great that's one of my yeah that's a good one okay talk about that because that's actually great for our audience to know rebound days what to do after a suboptimal day that means your day did not go as planned 
Yeah, so the first frame for that is a mental toughness coach named Stan Beecham, who worked with some of the world's elite athletes. He would ask them, all right, when you're the best in the world at what you do, how many off days do you think you would have a month, right? So it's worth considering. If you're the best in the world at what you do, literally each of us here, how many off days do you think you should have? Well, the kind of like less than top peak performers would say zero they'd think they'd get to a point where they wouldn't have off days. And that arguably is the greatest obstacle to them really showing up as their best. Because if you could never have an off day, good luck. Because then the moment you do, you're going to say to yourself, well, I'm a loser. I'm not who I thought I should be. And then you're going to give up. And then the next day is going to be even worse. And then the third and fourth day. So anyway, he says, no, no, you're going to have at least six. You're going to have, you know, three to four to five to six, quote, bad days, off days. Um, then the challenge is on those days, well, the wisdom is know that. Know that you're going to have off days. Then play poorly well. That's one of the most powerful ideas. That The Jack Nicholas, he's another uh, sports guy, a golfer. He says the absolute best athletes expect to make bad shots. So when it happens, they don't lose it. They know how to play poorly well. On days where they don't have it, they still know how to bring it. And he says, that's the skill that differentiates the true champions from the almost. So we have this wisdom. Then when you inevitably fall short of your standards and you do the things that you're not proud of, and we all do it, those things more often than we'd like. Then after that day, have a rebound day. So then remind yourself that you're human. Nothing's wrong with you. Common humanity, self-compassion 101. Embrace the fact that you will not be the first perfect human being, right? Common humanity. Kristen Neff 101, common humanity, then self-kindness, be nice to yourself, and then mindfulness. Notice when you're not being nice to yourself or forgetting nothing's wrong with you. Then what? Then for me, it's go to the app and start your morning, committing, recommitting to being your best self, especially after the day where you fell short of your standards. Then everything changes because then instead of one day becoming three or five or 10 or 50, spiraling down you use that to get stronger and that off day becomes the catalyst to rebounding and the metaphor is you throw a rebound like a, a hard ball you know that bounces high the harder you throw that ball the higher it bounces so if you have an off day rebound throw that down and, and recommit again to the things you do when you're at your best which presupposes you know what they are then presupposes you have the mindfulness, which you are cultivating in yourselves and in your clients to notice, oh, well, I just had a pretty bad day. And the old me and the less than enlightened version of me tends to do this after those days. The new mindful me has the wisdom and the discipline and the love and the courage to do what I know I need to do, even when I don't feel like it. That's a long answer again, but that's a rebound day. It's one of my favorite ideas in the book, and I love that you opened up to it. So we want to lean in the next day for the rebound day. And I have a new title for you, Brian. I think you should be a protocol designer. A protocol designer. I accept. <laughs> and I would, I would love my own haute couture protocol. That would be custom made <laughs> protocol um, by Brian Johnson. How cool would that be? Right? I'm sure, you, I'm sure there's a way to do that. Uh, first you read um, the book, then you can design your own protocol. And then... You can get, oh, you know what? You could probably share it in the community, right? On your app, on the Heroic app. If I had my protocol, my swipes. Okay, so just so I'm, I'm clarifying for people who are just jumping on. So Brian wakes up, meditates, eats healthy, kisses his wife, hugs his children, has quality time, disconnects from his phone, does work for three hours maybe on his book, makes a couple videos, talks to some people, goes back my to goodness. a million burpees. Go in all the, we got to bring my wife in here. She'll tell you what my days really look like. It is not that awesome, Sue. Well, yes, I well and this, this, is my, this is my <laughs> ideal day of you. My ideal I got you. of you. Like, this is what I think. Um, and so the idea is like, how do we find that for ourselves? What? Who are we with our best selves? The do, don't list, I think, was a genius, genius idea. We're going to read this book. Now, someone commented, this is volume one. And by the way, for those writers out there, my mother included, um, Brian decided to actually self-publish because, and I think that's actually a genius thing because 
when he brought it to the publishers, they wanted him to make it smaller. And he did not want to make it smaller. And actually, I love that video on YouTube where you show how you actually publish your own book, which is unbelievable. And I think you actually made the right call on that. I'm an author. My mom's written about 14 or 15 books. I can't remember. Um, you did a smart thing. This book is volume one, but I know you've done how many philosopher notes? And so how many, I think you have three more volumes that you could possibly do with just what you already have. Is that correct? Well, so I didn't actually self-publish. I didn't want to self-publish, but I also walked away from a deal with a kind of top three kind of established publisher because we got into, frankly, what became an argument. I was surprised. Like we hadn't even finalized the contract. We're already arguing over word count. I'm like, really? Like, I just want a few more words here. Like, give me a little bit of range. And it was a felt sense of not quite it. But then I didn't want to self-publish. So what we wound up doing was partnering with a more boutique publishing firm who is amazing, Blackstone Publishing. And we created our own imprint with them. So we kind of got the best of both worlds. So we have a world-class publisher. Um, we have a deal similar to what they did with Disney. So we have, I mean, they've been unbelievable partners. Um, and they also gave me complete creative freedom and autonomy to do what you're talking about, which is, I was clear I didn't want to create like a 250, 300 page kind of normal, not to be pejorative, but kind of fluffy book. And I was almost done with that, but I wanted to create something that felt different and felt heroic and just, you know, the way I wanted to do it. But they were amazing partners and continue to be amazing partners. We have a series of nine kids books coming out this year um, and a ton of other things that, that we're really excited about. Um, but yeah, volume one, it's 451 of the best ideas I know. Technically, I could create more volumes with what I have um, based on the content I have, but, but I intend to create a new one like every three to five years. I want five volumes. If I'm alive for the next 25 years um, and uh, my daimon encourages me to continue doing this, five volumes is kind of the, the target. And the idea is to create a fire, you need to hit activation energy point where one thing becomes another thing. So if you want to boil water, you have to hit 212 degrees. It's known in chemistry as an activation energy point. Nothing happens until you get to 212 degrees. For fire, it's 451 degrees. Boom. Paper is lit on fire. Um, that's important that we have that catalytic intensity, that we show up grounded and calm and tranquil yet energized. Um, five volumes at 451 is 2255 degrees which is what you need to forge a sword. So that's kind of the, the playful metaphor and um, God willing, uh, if I'm around, then, uh, then hopefully we'll, we'll create more volume. <laughs> but that's the basic idea. So yeah, I started writing volume two. And, and speaking of which, um, Brian also talks a lot in his books and coaching program about memento mori, which means to remember death. Um, and then I think I heard you quote Gary Vaynerchuk, who someone said, what's the best way to get motivated? And he said, remember death. So hmm. you have a coin that you carry with you, right? That says memento mori, I think. Somewhere on my desk right now, Ryan Holiday, kind of um, the great, you know, stoic teacher, modern stoic teacher, memento mori, remember death. It was an ancient stoic practice that paradoxically, and again, it's a practice of many spiritual traditions that being uh embracing our mortality is one of the most powerful ways to appreciate this moment so yeah that's um a deep practice for me and again something that you know we talk to our kids about in a non-morbid way but embracing the reality of life and the finite nature of it hopefully brings more um you know uh <clears throat> engagement in this moment someone asked a question um and that was Three simple steps, actually Selby, one of our teachers asked this, three simple steps to get started. So how do we get started? And oh gosh, we're running out of time. I'm so sad. Um, three simple steps to get started for people who are couch potatoes and want to be you when you're at your best self or like you. I would say, um, think the, the number one step would be think of the one thing that you know you could be doing, that you want to do, that you think would most benefit your life, um, and have fun. Engaging in the behavioral design, to use that kind of, um, that phrase, um, but th and then come back to that. So for me, I come back to that, that exercise of do and don't all the time. Anytime I wanna go next level or I feel myself a little bit overwhelmed or wobbly, 
it's all right, what's the one thing I could start doing, the one thing I could stop doing. Um, and then we want to study to do that, you need to study the art and science of behavioral change in my mind. Um, it's it's harder than you think to change your life, but not as hard as you think it is, mm. if that makes sense. So, you know, we talk about that a lot in our work and in the book, but James Clear's Atomic Habits is a great resource there. And then again, remember, nothing's wrong with you. It's not a character flaw that you have failed to kind of change your life the way you want. It's a design flaw is how BJ Fogg puts it. You just haven't been taught how to properly install and delete habits. And when you engage in the practice of it, um, life becomes a lot more fun and it becomes a lot easier. Not, not, um, it's never, you know, as easy as we'd like it to be, but becomes more effortless, if you will, um, to start changing things more skillfully. And I really think if you want to change anything, even just reading this book, and that you just sparked a thousand ideas that I have specifically from this book, where it's worse for you to not change than it is to change. Because in your book, you talk about looking on your deathbed back in your life and saying, you know, what if? Hmm. I'd rather say, oh, well, right? Then what if? Hmm. Um, so anyway, I love that. Hmm. Wow. We did a lot. And I think I want to thank, we had uh, at one point like 100, now we have 95. So like so many of you stayed on this call the entire time, we're, even though you know we're sending the replay out to our, our huge audience. Um, so I'm so excited to share you with everyone. They're going to just, I feel like I'm, sh I feel like I'm giving people a gift by sharing you. And I, I don't feel so that, much. I know that. You are such a, you are such a warm and wonderful human being. And, and, and yeah. Yeah, to celebrate you, what you demonstrate, um, I have goosebumps right now, you demonstrate a lot of things, um, but Barbara Fredrickson, one of the world's leading positive psychologists, talks about love and redefining it in different ways, but she talks about something called celebratory love. Uh, you are like the embodiment of love in general, but celebratory I'll drink love. To that. Oh, geez, yeah, me too, let's go. But <laughs> celebratory love is is what you've done for me so many times, and I'm sure you do all the time with your family and your community, et cetera. Um, which, I mean, it's it's obvious, and you know, but but celebrating just the essence of um, any individual. But I, I just feel blessed to um, to have been on the receiving end of your celebratory love, and um, want to celebrate you and your effervescent joy and wisdom and um, soul force and. Just an honor to be here with you today, and I appreciate uh, our time together. Time flies when you're having fun with friends, though, doesn't it? Ditto. Um, okay, so I know I want to tell you all a couple things. One is I would love at the end of this for everybody to just pop on and meet Ryan for a couple minutes because like, he likes seeing people's faces and connecting with them. But for those of you who are interested, as I mentioned, you need this book. And you'll, once you read it yourself, you want to share it with everybody you know. I already know that's going to happen. But he also has this amazing app called Heroic where you can actually figure out your do and don't list, then download this app and then actually, you know, swipe every time you do. Um, you don't have to swipe when you don't. You don't you'll see that. Mm -hmm. um, and then he also has a coaching program, which I took, which I loved. And I was never intending to be a life coach. But now I am a life coach and, you know, certified by it was optimized and now it's heroic and i think it's even bigger now than it ever was before but all of this stuff we can find on heroic dot huh? us yeah US. exactly heroic dot us or dot us you can find the app in the ios and android stores just search heroic we're the training platform and then heroic dot us slash coach is where you can learn more about the it's a 300 day program we worked with sonia libomirsky as you know um, mm -hmm. And we studied it scientifically with her. And she said in 35 years of research, she'd never seen anything that produced the results that we produce simply because it's it's ancient wisdom, modern science. And, and you know, we've been blessed to figure out how to make some of these ideas more practical. Um, but I'm so thrilled that you went through it. And again, so um, grateful for your incredible advocacy.